Okay, let's look at individual form elements then. Go back to the code. I just want to come back to the submit button. I didn't mention it towards the end of the last thing, but essentially the submit button, reset button, very, very important. Okay, resetting the form means basically clearing uh, any of the form elements that we have typed in. So for example, uh, if we come to here and you can see I have something here uh, in that uh, text area there. Okay, if I reset that, reset, click on the reset button, uh, it, clears, it clears that. Okay, so that's the reset does. Uh, the submit button on the other hand, okay, if everything is okay with our form, what I mean by that is that all of the extra HTML properties we're going to look at uh, is okay. Uh, I click on the submit button. What should happen is the action of the form property will kick in. Okay, in this case, we'll go to RT's web, web page. Okay, so very, very important. Okay, the submit button A has to be inside the form tag. Okay, the reset button has to be inside the form tag. Okay, so they're both here before the closing form tag, closing half of the form tag. That's really important. Okay, secondly, uh, you do not have more than one submit button. You do not have more than one reset button uh, inside a form. Okay, you have to have one and one only submit button inside the form tag and one and one only reset button inside the form tag. That's really important. Okay, so you click on the submit button, all going well with your form, you then go on to the action, wherever that is pointing us towards in the form tag. So, what are the other HTML tags that we've got? Uh, well, come back here again. If you notice here on the form, we've got our form elements kind of blocked off into boxes, and these boxes have uh, text appearing. Uh, like so. So let's uh, try and make sense of this as we see it here. Okay, so we can see contact details. Where is that? It is inside a tag called legend. Okay, double ended tag like that. And the legend is inside this box called the field set. Okay, and what the field set is doing there, the field set is essentially that uh, box, that rectangular box that's been drawn around name, telephone, promotion code, email, and date. Okay, so from the code point of view, you can see the field set is closing just after the date. Okay, so the field set is giving us the box. The legend tag is giving us the text uh, that breaks up the uh, boundary of the box like that. Okay, so that can be a good organizing principle uh, for some of your uh, some of your tags. Okay, so I'm just breaking it up in here uh, like that. So another one for personal information, another one for pick your favorite animals. Yeah, it's completely daft. Look on my page. I agree that completely. Uh, pick your favorite dog name, whatever. Uh, but that's what it's all about. Now, let's actually look at the form elements uh, proper, if you like. What have we got here? We've got a label tag around the name. Okay, uh, if you look at this part of the form it is really untidy okay you can see the label the piece of text before the form element uh, there are different number of characters in each label and then the form element text box usually uh, is appearing immediately afterwards oh the code is gone okay so that's very higgly piggly untidy looking so later on uh, the purpose of the label tag is to allow us to style the word name, the word telephone, the word promotion code, and so on, so that we can give these all the same width, and then the text boxes are all going to start directly underneath each other. Okay, so we do that very shortly. Uh, what have we got here? Okay, we've got one of these emboldened uh, asterisks here that's going to be red uh, and in bold like that. So ultimately, we will want the user to type something in here. Now, if you notice what's coming up there, it says, please enter your name here. Okay, once I move the mouse over there, and uh, I'm not getting that for telephone, I'm not getting that for promotion code, okay? So, 
name has got an extra property that text box there an, an extra property please enter your name here i wonder what that extra property could be oh my god it's the title property okay so if you put the title property in uh what does it do it gives the user a bit of help as to what is required in that form element okay it can't hurt uh, it's a good idea I mean, think of it if you're making a commercial website, you basically want to part the user with their money. So design your website as clearly as possible. Okay, as unambiguous as possible. Okay, the label should tell the user what you're looking for. Um, the title gives a bit more information and we can put some, we can put a kind of a, a text in here using the placeholder property, which we'll do shortly. Okay, so these are all very, very useful. And what else have we got? Name and ID. We're not going to be too hung up at the moment about why we're putting them in. It's just, if you can just accept that we should put them in right from the start. Okay, uh, if I didn't introduce them now, uh, some of you would forget to do it uh, and put them in later on. Okay. ID very useful for JavaScript name really really useful for working with databases programming language called PHP which you'll come across later okay type you might have mentioned remember I said input uh, very widely used and we differentiate its usage by using the word type so type equals text is a default value okay so we can type any alphabetic alpha new an, any numeric text okay that's called alphanumeric plus at or hyphen or comma or whatever uh, apostrophe as well okay these are all called text okay telephone here there's no type equals text here when you don't put type equals text in the browser assumes it's type equals text okay so you can either put type equals text in or not put it in uh, for an input tag the effect is the same Okay, what else can we say? Uh, input is a self-closing tag. Okay, so it's like meta, it's like HR, it's like BR, it's like IMG. Okay, you don't need forward slash input. You just have input like that. Okay, now let's look at what happens here. If I click on the word name, nothing really happens. If I click on the word telephone, look what happens. The cursor goes in there. Okay, if I click on promotion code, nothing happens. So telephone seems to have something extra of interest in. And essentially, what have we got here? We've this time inside the label tag, we've got the for property. Okay, for equals telephone, and that essentially is pointing towards the name, the text box whose name has the same value as the for property. Okay, what does that mean? That means when you click on the word telephone, the cursor is going to go into the text box whose name is telephone. Okay, so what what's the effect of that? The effect of that is if the user just doesn't quite click into the text box, if they click on the name instead, uh, the, the label, uh, you can start typing straight away. So it's a way of getting the user to fill out uh, the form as quick as possible. So again, uh, something that's good practice to put in what else have we got uh, promotion codes okay nothing new there uh, email okay notice type equals email this time okay so I type something that's not an email I'm getting an error message straight away okay in the old days pre HTML5 uh, we would have to uh, write a lot of JavaScript to, to do that. We would have to search through each individual character. Uh, if one of them would have to be an at symbol, uh, there was a lot of coding involved in that. Okay, whereas with HTML5, all we say is input type equals email, and we're going to get the error message generated automatically. Okay, and not only that, as long as we don't have an at symbol in there, the submit button won't work. So we'd be stuck on this page. We won't be going to visit uh rte okay uh next one here is the date okay this time type equals date and what's really nice about this is if we click on here 
all the dates are fixed. Okay, uh, November, there is no 31st of November. Okay, what is February looking like next year? Okay, it's not a leap year. Okay, so there's no 29th, no 30th of February, no 31st of February uh, next year. Okay, so in other words, we cannot pick an invalid date. Okay, by not letting the user type it in. Okay, if we want, we can, if I'm just highlighting that and then using the up arrow, uh, it shouldn't allow us to pick that actually. 29th, of, let's see what happens if we hit enter here. Okay, it doesn't like that. Doesn't like that. Okay, so that's all being done by HTML5. Okay, we're not writing any code to do that. All we're doing is type equals date. Now, if we run this in another browser, uh, it can look a little bit different, okay? Uh, some of these form elements don't quite have the full functionality. Uh, I am waiting for Edge to open and it seems to have gone to sleep. Okay, so let's open Edge and let's... Let's copy that link there. This is something you can do, okay? Uh, copy that link there and then run it inside Edge. And in fact, okay, Edge is already opened here. And okay, brilliant. Okay, Edge is actually uh, using the date. It, it last year didn't use it, okay? Uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't display properly. So that's. That's good. Okay, I move on. That was a uh, distraction really, but um, it's working fine. That's great. Okay, what else have we got here? Um, okay, personal information. Let's move on here. Age. Okay, can't type in letters there. Uh, why is that? Because it's type equals number. Min zero, min equals zero, max equals 100. Okay, so what am I doing there? I am setting... Uh, a limit okay so okay it doesn't like that uh here we go okay so min equals zero so i can't put in minus four uh max equals 100 111 uh is not applicable um what else have we got we've got the type equals range uh min equals 50 max equals 150 value equals 100 that is a default. If I put in uh, 60 there, let's say, and I come back and refresh here. Okay, you can see that the weight in kilos is down low here, 50 to 150. Okay, now you can set that to whatever value you want, but the problem about that is you don't really know what value it is. Uh, so uh, the range text box is rarely used. Uh, selection list, uh, okay, again, we give an ID and name. Now, this is the first form element where we need two separate tags in order to achieve a selection list, okay? We've got the select tag. Here's our first form element without the input tag, okay? And then for each line in it, okay, female and male, we need an option tag, okay? So select tag is double-ended. Option tag is double ended. There's our text that appears on the screen. Uh, we have to give it a built in value in this case. Okay, so whatever the user types into a text box, whether it be text, email, or number, okay, that is the value. Okay, with a selection list, we don't type anything, we pick some pre selected information. Okay, so the value, if I pick the first option there, the value that's going to be picked is female with a small f. Okay, female with a capital F, it's just what appears on the screen, but the actual value that would be sent to the database is female with a small f or male with a small m, uh, if we pick that. Okay, um, and quickly, color, type equals color, rarely used. Uh, I don't know, will you ever see it again? Um, I'm just giving it to you for the um, <coughs> sake of completeness, excuse me. Okay, so let's start to look at our text area uh, in the next video.